Welcome once again to Rhema Praise. We are so glad that you have tuned in today. And I have a subject that I'm talking about that uh, sometimes people have a problem with, and it's staying focused. I think especially, honey, in these days, um, people have trouble in staying focused for even a very a long length of time. Yeah, because there's so many distractions, mm -hmm. plus with all the, the video games and all of the video and everything moving so fast, I mean, mm -hmm. it's hard to stay focused for, for a short length of time. But, you know, if we're going to receive what God has for us, yes. we've got to stay focused on the promises of God. That's right. Now, many times when we get in a problem, we get our focus on the problem rather than on the solution, mm -hmm. which comes from God's Word. And so we stay focused on the promises. And you know, honey, sometimes because maybe we're believing for something and it right. does not happen immediately, mm -hmm. you lose your focus and you lose what you were believing for because you do not stay focused on what God has said. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, of course, Cameron, my, our grandson, you know, he's into racing and we're into racing. And, uh, he, he was talking about in that race car, he says he has to stay focused. He can't let his mind wander, think mm -hmm. about this. He has to stay focused on what's going on right there That's right. that minute because, uh, you know, when you're out there running as fast as he's running. You better stay focused. <laughs> you better stay focused, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Because uh, if you don't, you can get in trouble, you know. Uh, he's driven all kinds. He's driven some stock cars, but he, he likes driving the, the dirt track with the winged, uh, winged and non-winged uh, sprint cars, and that's what he likes to drive. And I was uh, at a race of his one day. I didn't get to see him much uh, because he tra travels and races. And uh, I was standing there, and he's coming out of corner number uh, number two, coming down the back stretch, and there's a car about middle ways down. And all of a sudden, he has to do that just to miss him. And I said, Cameron, what in the world? And he said, I saw the guy, but he said, I figured that he would be in, I would catch him when I got to the corner three. And he, he said, I caught him so quick. And, and, and he said, I was looking down the track to see what was going on thinking that I'm going to catch him there, but he caught him too quick. Mm -hmm. And and he had to, he had, he said, man, that taught me a lesson to, to, to stay focused on, on, on this car as well as looking, because when you're doing, when you're doing 118 miles an hour down, a, down a back stretch, you, you got to be looking That's down to right. the next corner That's to see right. what's going on. But he had saw this guy, but then he saw her, took his focus off of him because said, okay, I'll get him, I'll get the corner. What's happening on down there? And that, that's what we do sometimes. We, we see something, but then we see something else down here. And we, in this, we lose focus, and this causes that's a right. problem. Absolutely. You know, uh, we need to continually remind ourselves what God has said in this <laughs> word right here. Yes. Expect it to happen. Absolutely. Expect what God says to, to happen. Yes. He can and he will do what he said he would do. So you got to stay focused on it. When he said, I will bless you, then stay focused on the blessing. Right. Don't stay focused on all of the junk that's coming your way. Well, it doesn't look like I'm getting very blessed. Well, stay focused on the blessing that's and right. the blessing will come. Have so why don't we go where I'm talking about? I don't want to preach the sermon that's here. That's right. <laughs> stay focused. Has something that you've been believing for or maybe something that you feel like God has spoken to you about and you haven't seen it come to pass yet? All right, do you have unrealized dreams? Are you like Abraham who had a promise from God? And we do right here. We're all like Abraham. We all have a promise from God right here. We have promise of 
health and healing and protection and prosperity and all kinds of things. But you haven't seen any of it happening in your life or you haven't seen it happening as you think it should. Well, I want to talk to you tonight, today, actually, about staying focused. Don't waver. Don't become double-minded. See, in order to realize the promises of God, then we have to resent the temptation of wavering in our belief when it doesn't come to pass as quickly as we think it should. You know, look at James. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. And uh, we're going to start reading with that sixth verse. James chapter 1. I gauge when I start reading by looking at the people here on the front. And if they've got, if they've found it, then I go. All right. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. The, that man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded. He he is a double-minded man, unstable in all that he does. You know, the Bible is very clear here about the danger of of wavering. Doubt and unbelief, being double-minded, wavering, that's what wavering is. That's being double-minded. One, one time you're this way, one time you're this way. One time you're this way, one time you're this way. We cannot be in doubt and unbelief if we think we're going to, to get something from God. The Bible is very clear about the fact that you have to stay focused on the promises of God. Now, staying focused sometimes can be difficult in a lot of different areas. You know, when you're sitting in a classroom and you're listening to a lecture or listening to a teacher, it is very easy to let your focus wander and miss what they're saying. Anybody understand what I'm talking about? Anybody ever been there? You know, I can remember being in one of my classes there at Southwestern. And we, it, this, that classroom had risers in it. And it's, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very old building all the way back from the 20, 20s. Uh, and... Uh, so I had big wide, big windows, big wide windows, and we, some of us would, you know, uh, we would sit in class, and you look out the window, and it's right after it's right after lunch, and you would have a tendency to let your mind wander off and get off focus of what the professor was saying. Of course. Now, I'm the only one that's ever done that in, in the college class. So, I mean, I know you have never done that, but I got off focus. I, I, and I would start thinking about the intramural flag football game we were going to have, and I would start drawing plays. Has anybody here ever lost your focus in the classroom and then the professor or the teacher calls on you? You've been there and done that, huh? Okay. That's, uh, that's easy to do. In fact, I don't know, it was a year or so ago, I was, I was watching one of the NASCAR races on the TV and the guy that was leading, he was way out front. I mean, he was like a half a lap in front of everybody. And he goes into the corner 
and crashes into the wall. And they asked him in the interview afterwards, and he said, oh, I'm fine. And, and they said, well, what happened? He said, the race was so easy, and I lost my focus, and I went past the point that I should have let off of the accelerator, and then I was in trouble. He said he lost his focus. In other words, he, it, it was so easy, he, he lost, he was thinking about something else. He wasn't even thinking about what he was doing. Now, I know we all do that sometimes driving. We don't need to. So I want to remind you today of something that you know, but I want to reiterate it to you today because you need to continually be reminded to stay focused on the promises of God. Unless you continue to stay focused on God's promises, they will not become a part of your life. An interesting fact about Abraham now is that he had to stay focused on the promise when nothing was happening. I mean, it had been, the Lord told him that he would be the father of many, uh, of many nations and his seed would number as the stars and the sands of the sea. So he was reminded day and night, looking up in the sky at night, walking around during the day on the sand of what God had said. Now, he did not consider some things. He had to get to the place where God's word what God said was the, was the final thing. There was nothing else. That was it, period. See, he had to come to the fact of the appearance and the feeling of his own body. He had to deal with the fact of deadness of Sarah's wound. He had to deal with the fact of their age. See, receiving from God and his promises is largely due to the fact that a person keeps the word of God in front of him, focused on it. Now, how many of you today, as you drove the church, were more focused on driving and focused on the cars around you than you were last August when it was 110 degrees outside. <laughs> Why were we more focused today? Because there was intimate danger continually. You did not know even though the road looked completely clear, you could not tell when a patch of ice was going to show up. Am I correct? So, because of that, you stay focused. Have you ever noticed with the things of God how that when everything is going fine and everything is going good, we tend to lose our focus it isn't until the pressures of life come in, something, something comes in that we immediately start going back and getting our focus on the Word of God. Come on now. It's the truth. I said we, I didn't say you. I included myself. You know, it doesn't matter whether you're the preacher or the person sitting in the pew. We are both the same, and we both have to continually keep ourselves focused on the truth of God's Word. If we don't, we will miss something. We will miss out on a blessing. 
We're no different than the children of Israel. Man, everything's going along good and everything's fine and they lose their focus on God. And the next thing you know, they've got themselves in trouble because they lost their focus on God. Anybody ever read about it over in the Old Testament about the children of Israel? I got 55 people that raised their hand. It's re 55 people in this whole room right now have read the Old Testament and the stories of children of Israel. I would suggest that some of the rest of you read those stories because the Apostle Paul says that what happened to the Israelites happened as examples for us. Now, what is an example for? It's to help you not to do something or help you to do something, right? We better read and see what they did and what happened to them when they lost focus and what happened to them when they kept their focus. When they kept their focus on God, they were blessed. When they lost their focus on God, they had trouble. Turn to your neighbor and say, you been in trouble lately? <laughs> then you lost your focus. <laughs> you know, we, we all know what I'm preaching teaching this morning or preaching or whatever it is I'm doing up here. <laughs> but you know, we all tend to lose our focus on the things of God sometimes. You know, when the pressure is on, what do we need to do? Quote the promises of God. Or you might want to say it this way. Read the word. We need to have it in us so well and be so focused on it that we wouldn't even have, uh, in the beginning, we can quote two or three verses of scripture while we're going to look up the rest of them to read them. When the pressures of life begin to squeeze down on us, out of us should come the promises of the what the promises of God. When life begins to squeeze, out of you should become no weapon formed against me will prosper. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I can do all things. When lack raises its ugly head, we immediately should respond with the promises of God. Keep our focus. Sickness comes around. Read him the promises of God. When fear wants to invade your life, begin to quote the word of God. Be focused. Turn to your other neighbor on the other side and say, stay focused. stay focused. When impossibilities arise, what are you going to do? What are you going to stay focused on? Word of God. Now, let me, let, let me go back here. Everything that I read about, and I said stay focused on the Word, every one of those are situations that if you're not careful, your focus will get off of what the promise of God's Word is onto the situation. And you'll begin to look more at the situation than you do at what God says in His Word. Anybody ever been there besides me? We all get to that point. The pressures come in from all sides. But whatever comes, stay focused. Now, 
the world can offer you some help in some incidents. But Matt, be sure you keep the Word of God in focus at the same time. Remember, I'm always saying the natural and the supernatural working together make the explosive force for God. Now see, where the problem becomes is some people get so far over here in the natural that they've let the promise go, you know, the, the focus on God's Word. But then on the other hand, some people get so far over here on the other side that they let what they should be doing in the natural go. Let me understand what I'm talking about. But you know, we are a natural person. There are some things in the natural that we can do, but we need to bring the natural and the supernatural and work them together. I call it working both sides of the fence. Hello? Sooner or later, if you stay focused on the promises of God, your faith will receive it. When they start talking about storms, they start talking about disasters, they start talking about epidemics, I began to say, Father, I thank you because you care about me and you said, no harm will overtake me, will befall me. No disaster will come near me. No plague will come near our dwelling. Why? Because he cares. How to Live Worry-Free, an encouraging three-CD series by author and pastor Kenneth W. Hagan that will help you step out of the bondage of stress and fear. And Where is God in My Storm, a timely book by Kenneth W. Hagan that explores the very real trials faced by men of faith in the Bible and how God, their ever-present help, always brought them through. He is our anchor in the storms of life. Both the book and the CDs can be yours for only $19.95. Just call toll-free 888-PRAISE-8 to order or order online at rhema.org anytime. I hope that you get a hold of what I'm talking about, staying focused on the promises of God so that they will come to pass in your life. Yeah, you know, honey, um, when I am to stay focused on what I'm believing for, I find a scripture and to stay focused on that, I look at that scripture over and over. Yes. For, uh, for instance, you know, if if maybe I've got a project and I don't don't know if I can do that project or right. if I have the ability to do it. Yeah. Well, I know that in Christ I do. So I go to Philippians 4.13, my favorite scripture. Right. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. And you know, as I'm going through that project, when I have doubts in my natural mind, you know, yeah. because your mind will do tricks on you, I just go to the scripture and I just say, the Word says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I would just encourage you, you know, if you're having trouble to staying focused on the promises of God, go and find a scripture and read it over and over yes, and over yes. again. You know, I was looking around the, the studio here. We got, we got three cameras. Mm -hmm. And one of them's on and the other two guys, their, their camera's not, not on. But they have to stay focused and keep that camera in focus at all times because yes. they never know when the director in the control room is say, okay, camera two, you're on. That's and right. that means camera one's off. And, and you you got to stay focused all the time. Yes. And you got to do the same thing with God's Word. That's right. Well, well, I could talk about that a whole lot because it, it's just something that that I see in our world today that's causing people a problem. And so I wanted to try to help you and I hope you get a hold of it because <laughs> focusing on God's Word will set you free. And you know what I was thinking about? As you focus on the Word of God, yeah. guess what? You can live worry-free. Yeah. And this is our offer for, for this month. Uh, your th three CDs on how to live worry-free. And, and what that's dealing with, when I say worry-free, it's dealing with stress and fear and bondage. Yes. And especially people are living in fear. They're worrying about, oh, is this going to happen to me? Is this going to happen to me? Am I going to get this? Am I going to get that? And we don't have to live in fear. No. In fact, you know, I hear people so often now saying, I'm just 
stressed out. I am yeah. just burnt out. Well, you don't have to be stressed out and you don't have to be burned out if you will look to the Word of God because the and Word then, says not to worry. And then my book, Where is God in, in My Storm? It's not a matter of, of if, if the storm's going to storm. come. It's a matter of when. These are normally thirty-two ninety-five. You can go right there on our to go to our bookstore on the website, mm -hmm. and you'll see that that's what they are. But I'm offering them for nineteen ninety-five because I want you to get a hold of these because not because they're going to help me, but because they're going to yes. help you. They're going to help you to overcome in life and be what God wants you to be. That's right. Well, Co Rama College Weekend is coming up very soon this month, April 25th through the 27th. Um, come and visit the campus. Yeah. Uh, if you're interested in maybe coming to school, come to College Weekend. Um, we'll, you'll be able to attend classes. We'll have a special luncheon. Oh, yeah. And you'll get to meet uh, some of the instructors. So it's a great time it's, it's to really know a great about time. Rama. So you can go there. They got the, the information on the screen, how to get there. So you just go read it and go do what it says and you'll get there. That's right. You know, uh, and we have uh, one of our Living Faith Crusades is coming up in May 4th through 7th in Fort That's Wayne, right. Indiana. And so if you live in that area, begin to tell people about it and begin to make your plans May the 4th through the 7th at Fort Wayne, Indiana at Summit Church with Pastors Al and Carla Jennings. So That's right. So make and sure you begin to talk about that. And actually, uh, we, in June, we're going to be up in St. Cloud, Minnesota at Joy Christian Center with Pastors Brian and Shelley Gober. That's and right. we're looking forward to that. That's the first time we've been in that area. So, hey, all of our friends up in that area, come on out and, and visit with us. And don't forget uh, that we have Rainbow Bible Church, Oklahoma City, uh, every Sunday night at 6 p.m., right. 8921 Northwest Expressway. And so if you're in that area, come and check us out. And we're always we're always talking about Oklahoma City, but we have, we're right here yes. in the Tulsa area every, every Sunday morning every at 10 and every Sunday evening at 7 and every Wednesday evening at 7. And those yes. are live streams. That's and right. So if you go to rhema.tv, uh, you can you can tune in on the service. Now that's uh, that's Central Time or Central Daylight Time, I guess yes. it will be. Uh, so uh, you know, uh, so tune us in, okay? Well, honey, I think it's about time to get out of here. We want to thank each and every one of you who have partnered with us and helped us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Ken and Lynette Hagen. Ken, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information, please write, call, or visit our website. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope, help, and healing for a hurting world.